first, first September 2021, Being Fruitful by Pastor Simon James. Greetings in the name of Jesus and welcome to Riverside Tabernacle. I'm Pastor Simon and it's my honor to share God's word with you tonight. We trust you will find this message inspiring and uplifting. May you be receptive to the voice of the Blessed Holy Spirit. Riverside Tabernacle is an online Christian ministry committed to preaching the truth about Jesus and his redemptive work. Riverside Tabernacle does not own the right to the music or the pictures used in this video. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus and we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we can enter the throne room of God, for this opportunity, Lord, to be used to broadcast your message to the world. We thank you, Lord, that you have sought to use us. And I pray, O Lord, that even as, as I open my mouth, that I'll be just your spokesperson, nothing else. I pray, O Lord, that the Holy Spirit will direct my lips, direct the camera person, and bless everyone who's listening right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask these mercies. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Being fruitful. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, forgiveness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Death brings life. The book of John says that death brings life. I'm, I'm going to explain that right now from you to you. Just got a bit of a glitch. Sorry. Jesus says in John 12, 24, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. A seed is a tightly packed plant in a capsule. It has the total blueprint necessary to produce a plant like its parent. So every little seed that you see, a bean seed or a mustard seed, no matter how tiny those seeds are, inside those seeds is contained the total blueprint to produce a plant after its kind. The seed is the genetic code it's encapsulated in that little seed and the dna may be long it may be if you had to write it out it could be hundreds and hundreds of or thousands even maybe ten thousands of letters long but it's contained in that little seed the seed knows how to grow however a seed is just a capsule until it is buried in the ground a seed that is not buried in the ground a seed that is lying in your cupboard is just a seed or it could be food but until it is buried in the ground it is nothing but when it is buried in the ground it dies and in the process of dying it produces new life now without dying the seed cannot produce a new life jesus whom the Bible describes as a seed of the woman, died so that he could raise us up as his offspring, after his kind, into a new life, a new creation. We have become the creation of God in the likeness of God once again, because Jesus, the seed of the woman, died and was buried. And we are now grafted we who were wild figs we were wild vines have been grafted again into the body of christ as jesus died to himself so we must also die to ourselves and our own desires and submit to god's eternal plan this process will give new life in jesus christ we will produce fruit in season now every tree that has grown from a seed that has long disappeared, but whose genetic code lives on in the tree and in its fruit. So the seed disappears, but the tree or the plant 
continues to grow and produces fruit. Now trees that are pruned produce more fruit. To the layman, it seems counterintuitive to cut off trees' branches and expect more fruit. But pruning induces the remaining branches to get stronger and produce more fruit. Pruning removes the unproductive branches and shapes the tree. Remember Jesus and the tree that he cursed, the fig tree that he went to and found no fruit? It had great foliage, but it had no fruit. It had great leaves. It looked majestic. It looked like a tree that was very fruitful. But when Jesus got to it, it had no fruit. Leaves and branches that are not productive sap the water and nutrients without producing any fruit. In other words, you can have all the leaves on a tree and all the beautiful branches, but if there are no fruit, it is unproductive. And this renders the tree as useless as firewood. You see where I'm going. Trimming up the dead wood gives the more productive branches a better chance of growing and becoming more fruitful because of more nu nu nutrition. Pruning is painful, but it is necessary. John 15, 12 says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Life can come from death. Our eternal life comes from the death of Jesus. Something that is very essential, and there are few things that are essential for growth of a tree. And today I want you to imagine a seed and that is growing into a plant and this plant growing into a large tree and the large tree producing fruit. And you can imagine whatever you want. It could be apples, it could be uh, mandarin, it could be peaches or whatever. But I want you to keep this picture in mind as I speak so that you will understand the analogy. Fruit contain a relatively large amount of water. Now the fruit that is growing does not absorb this water from its environment per se. Water is absorbed by the root system and the root system then by uh, osmosis pushes it up and capillary action through the tree through the uh, uh, branches, uh, through the trunk, into the branches, into the leaves and into the fruit. And the fruit grows. And as the fruit grows, it, be, it absorbs more water. A fruit, fruit is usually a large percentage of water. Water is the carrier of nutrients from the ground or the soil to every part of the growing plant or the growing tree. Without water, a plant will wilt. And eventually die. You men will know this that when your wife is away for a week or so at a mother's place the plants at home all die because you forget to water them. Water is the lifeblood of a plant. As we have blood flowing through our veins and we need it so too the, the plant has sap going through its body but as we need water in our blood the plant needs water in its venous system. A plant that is deprived of water becomes stunted and will be less fruitful. That is why in a desert you find the plants are very small. They are like shrubs. They don't grow very large except for a few that grow quite, the succulents seem to grow. But normal plants, they remain as little shrubs. That's because of the lack of water. The plant that receives regular watering will be stronger and its fruit are going to be better. The fruit are going to be juicier and they're going to taste better. Water is an important component of the fruit. Without water, the fruit are small. Without water, the fruit are dry and unappetizing. But water gives the fruit its plumpness, its juiciness and its taste. The, water will, the tree will also grow to its full potential if it has water. It will grow to its full fruitful potential. Thus it is clear that water is essential for life and for fruitfulness. Water ensures health and fruitfulness of a plant. And of course our bodies as well. Psalm 1.3 says that the righteous man is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wilt or wither. In all that that righteous man does, he prospers. 
Now I'm taking you from looking at the tree to looking at a person. The righteous man is a tree that is close to a water source, the river of life. I'm not talking about the rivers that we have in our countries. I'm talking about the river of life, a river of life that flows from God. Jesus is the living water. He is the river of life. And it is this river of life that we need our roots to be tapped into. If we tapped into the river of life, we receive from Jesus. We have to make that connection with Jesus. And that connection is made with Jesus by us being close to Jesus, spiritually and physically. Applying the analogy of the, Christ, of the tree to the Christian, the fruitful believer is tapped into the water of life. He's tapped into the river of life. He lives near the river of life. He lives in the river of life. It is the water of life that flows to the veins and the life of the true believer that gives him his characteristic. Without the living water, the life of a Christian will be unfruitful. And if you find yourself tonight that you are a Christian, but you have a life that is unfruitful. In other words, you are not achieving fruit for the Lord. You're not, you don't have the fruits from Galatians 5, 22, 23 working in your life. You don't have the fruit where people are being saved, where people are enjoying your counsel, your godly counsel, then you are not fruitful. And if you're not fruitful tonight, then you need to find out, you need to analyze yourself, introspect yourself and see whether you are living next to Jesus or you have gravitated away from him. As Jesus found the fig tree, found the fig tree, an unfruitful Christian is barren. A Christian that is not tapped into the Lord. In other words, he's not reading his Bible. He's not praying. He's not going to church, which is a very essential thing. He's not witnessing for the Lord. He doesn't know the word of God. And he's an unfruitful Christian. He's an unfruitful Christian. He's a barren Christian. He's like somebody who can't produce, like the fig tree. That Jesus came to look for fruit. It looked beautiful, but there was no fruit. Then again, the wrong water. If you use any water beside the living water, if you're tapped into any other source, any other God, any other practice besides Jesus Christ, and I'm totally, totally adamant about this. If you're not tapped into Jesus Christ, you are drinking the wrong water. Spiritual water is wrong. The wrong water can give an appearance of fertility. An appearance of fruitfulness, an image of greatness and fruitfulness. But at the same time, one can be completely barren. No fruit. Absolutely no fruit. Jesus found the fig tree looking lush and green with much foliage, much many leaves, beautiful green leaves. But when he searched among the leaves for fruit, he found none. He found none. Many trees tend to drop the leaves as the fruit grow. And that's because the leaves are non-essential at that time. The fruit is all important. Jesus found no fruit on this luscious fruit tree. On this luscious fig tree. And he cursed that fig tree. It was apparently fruitful, yet hopelessly barren. And Jesus cursed that fruit tree. And I want you to remember that. That those who are not fruitful for the Lord will wither, brings up, bring upon themselves a curse like Jesus cursed the fig tree. And that curse is basically the fact that you have not accepted Jesus and you're heading for firewood. By God's grace, we are not as hopeless as the fig tree that was cursed. Thank God we're not as hopeless as that. Because Jesus took care, took that curse for us so that his blood could be shed to enter our spiritual veins by the acceptance of him as Savior. Jesus, the Bible says, cursed is he who is hanged on a tree. And Jesus took that curse for us so that we do not have to be cursed trees anymore. Even if we stunted, even if we're unproductive, unfruitful, the blood of Jesus can change our appearance. The blood of Jesus can change our stature. The blood of Jesus can make us fruitful again. 
even if you're not tapped into the living water, you can now tap into the living water. All it takes is say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Give me a connection with you. And when you're tapped into the living water, you will live again and you will be fruitful. A second component or a, that is essential for good growth is soil. Now soil in nature is the reservoir of minerals and nutrients that are needed to make a tree strong and fruitful. Everything is leveled to the sand eventually. Whatever it is, your bodies, the buildings, the trees, everything eventually is dust and it returns to dust. It becomes the dirt again. And in that dirt, we plant a seed. And from that dirt, this, which is a reservoir of nutrients and minerals and water, the plant begins to grow. The seed absorbs the water. It, it starts to burst open. It sends a shoot out, which automatically knows where the sun is. And a root that goes down into the soil. And a plant that is rooted deep in good soil will stand strong, will grow healthy. And soil gives the plant, gives the plant a root that is firmly embedded in the ground. Soil allows the root to take hold. And good soil will make sure that the root system is strong so that the tree does not blow over at the slightest wind. You know a tree, when you look at a tree on the top, they say these large trees, their root system is as large on the ground as their branches are above ground. And that is because it needs to stabilize the tree. And good soil will ensure healthy roots and healthy roots will keep the tree firm. Soil also provides nourishment. If you are strongly rooted in Jesus Christ, the soil that I'm talking about is the teachings of the Lord, is the word of God, is the values of Jesus, is the body and the blood and the Lord himself. If you are rooted in God, you will never be shaken. Not all soils are good. There is good soil and then there is bad soil. Remember the parable of the sower. A sower went out to sow. And the Bible says that some seeds fell along the path. Some fell on the rock. Some fell among thorns. And all these did not grow well. Some of them sprouted for a moment and then died. But the seed that fell into the good soil grew and yielded a hundredfold. Good soil is paramount. Now what is soil when I talk about it? Remember your plant. Don't lose that picture. The soil represents the teachings that we were or are exposed to. A person that is exposed to sound biblical teachings from a good Bible-based church. A church that believes in sound doctrine, not in man-made doctrines, will grow to be spiritually fruitful. Additionally, the Christian must be receptive to the guidance of the blessed Holy Spirit. If you do those two things, if you are exposed to sound biblical teaching from a good Bible-based church, and you study the Bible with them, and you listen to the Holy Spirit, you will grow spiritually. You will grow strong roots. The reason why I, or my family, and I'm not boasting about this, but I thank my father and mother that they gave us, and my siblings of course, that gave us a strong grounding, a strong rooting in the Word of God that I will not be shaken easily. Because I know the Word of God. I have absorbed the nutrients from the soil that is the Word of God. I am grounded in it. Thus, soil fosters fruitfulness. Another way to look at the soil is how receptive one is to the Word of God. Soil could also represent your heart. Rocky soil is one who superficially receives a message. The soil or the person who represents rocky soil is the person who receives a message of God immediately. And they grow for a while and then they divert. 
The decision is based on, on the wrong motivation. For example, someone converts to Christianity from another religion because he wants healing. But as soon as he gets his healing and things go back to normal, he forgets the Lord and he reverts to his old religion and he leaves the Lord. Or someone who needs financial help, people will phone you and say, Pastor, can you pray for me? I've got this problem. Or they pray themselves, somebody else helps them. They call to Jesus, help me financially. And as soon as they get it, life goes back to normal and they forget the Lord. Or somebody marries somebody, marries a believer just so that he can marry, uh, sorry, if, and somebody gives the heart to the Lord Jesus Christ just so that they can marry a believer. I remember many cases like this as we grew up, you know, as my father and mother used to counsel and even as I did that, that people will come to you and say, I'm in love with so and so, but the person is not a believer. And then the person says, no, but I want to give my heart to the Lord. And in a sudden turnaround, they give their heart to the Lord. And then later, once they married, they turn back to the old ways. You see, they've never had a deep root because the soil layer on rock is very, very shallow. Then there is a soil along the path that has been hardened by people walking over it. And the soil cannot take root. The water that falls on it runs off and people trample on the message. And the birds come and steal that message. Those people are the per people whose heart are, hearts are hardened against the Lord Jesus Christ. We have so many people whose hearts are hardened. They will never be fruitful because they will never be tapped into the word of God. Before the message can even take root, birds devour it. What are the birds? The birds represent the negative, represent the negative voices of self and others of our education, of what we call science, which argue against a living God, which argue against accepting Jesus. And so these birds steal our seed. They steal our growth. They steal our lives. And the trees there, those seeds die. They don't even grow. They're eaten. Now God wants all to be saved. That is a fact. But not everyone will be saved. Now, yeah, you heard this from me. Maybe you didn't hear it before. Maybe people tell you that everyone's going to be saved, that everyone can be saved. Yes, everyone can be saved. Yes, God wants all to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But not everyone will be saved. And I'll tell you why, because it's a personal choice. It's a fact. God gave you free will. God made you a free moral agent. So that person that you're speaking to that may not, that always argues about him, keep doing it. Keep speaking to him. We don't know if God is going to save that person. Don't write them off. But know this, that there will be some that will not be saved. Because the Bible says when Jesus comes, many will be left behind. Two shall be at the mill, one will be taken away, one will be left behind. Two shall be sleeping, one is gone and the other remains behind. That's a fact. Now, there are also those who receive Jesus, grow in Christ up to a point. Then the cares of this life, which are called the thorns, seems some insurmountable. And their faith wavers, it wanes, and they backslide. Again, their motives are wrong. These are the people who receive the Lord Jesus Christ and expect the Lord to, be, to give them a pleasant life. They want an enjoyable, comfortable ride. Now, the Lord never promised you a comfortable ride, but he did promise you a soft landing in heaven. But this life is difficult. This life is difficult. There are thorns that are trying to choke you all the time. These cares of the world, the financial cares that hurt us so much, the relationship problems that we have. Oh, all the problems between in-laws and outlaws and all the other things, your children, marital problems, work problems, business uh, problems, whatever. All these are cares that seem insurmountable. These are cares of life that seek to choke your spirituality, that choke you. But you need to overcome that. 
today I'm telling you that you can be fruitful. You do not need to die because you've got thorns in your life. Paul had a thorn in his flesh, an evil spirit that, that troubled him, pains that he had or whatever it was, pride, whatever. But he walked through it. You know, there's a saying that if God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. If God allows something to come to you, he will allow you to overcome it. I want you to remember that today. God brings you to it, he will take you through it. But if God allows something to come to you, he will help you overcome it. Again, in this case, many of these people that are choked by the cares of the world have the wrong motives. You see, they want God for what they can get from him. But God doesn't want you to, to want what you can get from him. He wants you to want him. A parent can give a child everything. But ultimately, the child wants the presence of the, of the parent and not the present. I would prefer to be in my father's presence right now, in my mother's presence right now, rather than all the things that they have left for me in their will. That makes me, I can give all that up just to have them for one more day in my life. Soil is important. Remain in Christ. When we were young, we lived in an, in an orchard and we periodically pruned our fruit trees. We didn't like to do it. We were forced to do it. We were the cheap labor that my mom and dad had. But we lived in an orchard and we periodically pruned our fruit trees. And often we had to cut off whole branches. And I remember thinking, this is such a great branch and we're cutting it off. But my my brother and my mom, who used to direct this operation, understood that it was essential. And when we cut off a whole branch, in a matter of days, that branch was cut, that was cut off started to die. And in a few weeks, it was some firewood. We knew even then that a branch that is cut off from the tree trunk cannot live. It dies. It starts to die immediately. Now a person living outside Jesus Christ can also dies and therefore can bear no lasting fruit. Such a person will not live a fulfilled life. It may, may appear so, but life is only fully lived if one has a passport to eternal life, a passport to life city. To be fruitful, one must be connected to Jesus. It is from him that the branches, the leaves receive life. It is from him that they receive the ability to produce fruit. John 15, 4 says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. Without Jesus, one cannot be truly fruitful. One cannot be truly fulfilled. The purpose of a tree is to produce fruit after its kind. Without Jesus, you will not produce fruit after your kind. Many are materially fruitful, but disconnected from Jesus and therefore spiritually unfruitful. Many of us are materially fruitful. We seem to have everything. We are like that fig tree, which is lush and green and tall. But we have no spiritual fruit. Spiritual fruit is what is important. Spiritual fruit outlasts this life. Physical fruit that you can pick up a tree will stay behind. Spiritual fruit outlasts this life. The material and physical fruit we produce in this world remains in this world when we leave. Spiritual fruit transfers to the next life. In fact, spiritual fruit is born or is born, B-O-R-N-E, in the next life. Fruit are our service to God, our service to man. Yes, we should be serving man as well. The fruits of the Spirit, that's in Galatians 5, 22, 23. And of course, the souls that are saved through our witness. Don't forget that. So our fruits are our service to God. How do we serve God? How do we serve man? The fruits of the Spirit, which is forbearance, long-suffering, forgiveness, etc. And the souls that we have saved. Now a branch connected to the Lord cannot be unfruitful. That's a given. If you're connected to Jesus, you cannot be unfruitful. If you are unfruitful, check your connection. It means that you're not receiving the signals. 
Jesus in Jeremiah 23 and 33 is called the righteous branch that comes from the from the line of David. He was Jesus was always connected to the Father. He was always connected to the Father. The Bible says and in the night and in the mornings when people were fast asleep Jesus was connecting to the Father. He was always with the Father even in his physical walks every day when he walked and talked and preached and prayed he was connected directly to the Lord without the father Jesus could do nothing he kept his connection to God we too must stay connected to God as the branch has to stay connected to the tree trunk we must be connected to the tree trunk and we must be connected to Jesus for it is from him we receive our growth and faithfulness it is he who gives us the, the ability to grow and to be fruitful. It is he who nurtures us. It is in the Lord that we live and move and have our being. Stay connected to God like Jesus did. The master gardener is Jesus. Now every orchard, garden, farm has a gardener or a husbandman. It is this gardener who ensures that the seed is planted in the correct soil at the correct time. During the correct weather, it is watered and receives the right fertilizer in the correct quantity. And it is this master gardener who prunes a tree as necessary. Okay. If you plant a seed in the wrong time, it does not grow. If you plant a seed in the incorrect soil, it does not grow. If you do not water it, it does not grow. If you do not nurture and fertilize it, fertilize it, it does not grow. And if you don't prune it, it is not very fruitful. There is pruning and there is cutting off. There are two aspects of pruning. Pruning, which is trimming, and there is cutting off. A gardener makes a choice as to which branch he will cut off and which branch he will prune. The, the maxim is this simple, simply. The maxim is this. The branch that is barren or unfruitful is cut off and the branch that is fruitful is trimmed back. Pruning gives new life and cutting off kills the branch, kills off the branch and assigns it to the fireplace. So we are branches in this tree of Christianity. Jesus is the trunk. The word of God is the root. Okay. If we are not producing fruit, Jesus will cut us off. If we, if he thinks that we are not worth saving if we are not going to be fruitful at all he will trim us off he will cut us off if he thinks that he can he could prune us so that we could bear more fruit he will trim us and it is not easy it is not simple it is not it is painful very painful now why is pruning necessary pruning cuts off the dead branches every one of us in our own tree our lives have unproductive unproductive areas areas that are better if they removed and we need to cut off that those habits that are not giving god glory we need to cut them off those books that we read that are adding no value to you as a child of god we need to cut them off then pruning also removes sections that are growing faster than others Sometimes in a tree, a certain plant, part of the tree grows faster. I noticed this with the, with the, the plants like Bougainvillea. You'll get all of a sudden a single branch or a single uh, shoot that grows from the main branch and it just grows out of control. And it grows tall and long and it drops over, but there are no flowers that needs to be trimmed off. Now, a master gardener knows what to trim. And how do we apply this in our life? There are certain areas in our life that we pay more attention to that are in reality time wasters. There are a lot of things that we do daily that are time wasters. Listening to, watching videos, watching certain TV programs, reading certain things, doing certain things. These are time wasters. And sometimes we need to understand that they are taking too much of our attention. When your hobby takes more attention than your job, maybe it's time to relook at your hobby. 
when you are spending time doing too much of work and not spending enough time enough time with family maybe you need to reevaluate your values anything that does not strengthen or nurture you is a time waster it is superfluous it's redundant pruning builds a stronger root system enabling the tree to absorb nutrients more efficiently when you prune a tree above the ground there's a reaction in the roots underground the roots go stronger and they absorb nutrients more efficiently and the stronger roots make the tree healthier and they hold up better in a storm and a tree that is rooted like i said earlier a tree that is rooted on the word of god will weather any storm removing the dead limbs promotes better tree health since dead wood is more susceptible to insect infestation and disease things like blight and the rust that t- trees get that trees uh, seem to get these are diseases of trees dead wood seems to attract them they grow better on dead wood and then they creep onto the good wood pruning also stimulates new growth and encourages fruit production jesus the master gardener tends his fruit trees very carefully he he knows exactly what each tree needs he 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 tends them to ensure that they grow correctly and that they are fruitful and the end of the day they must be fruitful part of this tending is the process of pruning pruning is painful but the tree and the gardener benefit from it the tree grows better more fruitful the gardener gets more fruit now every tree has its own place in the garden its own expectation from the lord or the gardener and each has its own treatment regime not every tree is treated in the same place not every plant is planted in the same locations jesus nurtures each tree according to its peculiar needs my illustration today is called the master craftsman is shaping you god is pruning you today during the great depression of the 1930s those of you who know history will know that towards the end of 1929 america fell into a deep depression which lasted 10 years now during the great depression of the 1930s a good man a man who was working in a good job lost his job he struggled to make ends meet but soon his savings were exhausted he and his wife sadly lost their home to the bank the bank foreclosed and took their home just when he thought nothing worse could happen his grief was multiplied by the sudden death of his young wife jobless homeless and now all alone the only thing that he had left was his faith the only thing that he had left was his roots in the ground his fruitfulness was gone as he combed the neighborhood looking for work he noticed some men working on a nearby church he stopped to watch the men as they did stone work on the church building and as he watched he noticed one man on the ground was skillfully chiseling a triangular piece of rock he looked around in the building to see where that triangular piece would fit in not seeing a spot where it would fit fit in He walked up to the um, stone mason and he asked him, "Where are you going to put that piece?" The man pointed to the top of the building, right on the top of the spire and said, "See that little opening up there near the spire? That's where this little piece goes." The man looked up at the tall church spire and saw a tiny triangular opening in the wall high above the ground. Before he could say anything the stonemason said I'm shaping this piece down here so that it will fit up there <laughs> Tears filled the man's eyes as he walked away thinking of those words I'm shaping it down here so that it will fit up there In that instant he realized that the Lord was shaping him down here on earth so that he would fit up there in heaven The master gardener is shaping his trees for his heavenly garden deceptive appearances i have seen trees that look perfect in shape perfect in height perfect in color and have the perfect location yet have not seen a single fruit on them 
Then I have seen trees that are gnarled, their branches twisted by the winds, branches broken off by snowfalls, trunks blighted with fungi and stunted by drought, but heavy with juicy fruit. Appearances can be deceptive. deceptive. As children of God, we should, we should not be living to be crowd pleasers, but God pleases. We should be living to show the Lord that we are fruitful, not to give man the appearance that we are fruitful. The green leaves of the fig tree re reminds me of everything that we can earn materially in this world, but have no fruit. The Lord does not physically trim our limbs, God forbid, but allows the storms of life to challenge us, to rid us of unwanted dead wood in our lives and to spur us on to new growth that makes us more fruitful. God uses the challenges, the storms of this world, the pitfalls, the problems to shape us down here so that we could fit up there. Do you want to be more fruitful tonight? Remember this, the tree that yields to the gardener will produce a greater yield. The tree that yields to the Lord will produce a greater yield for the Lord. We trust that you have, a, you have enjoyed God's word and that it has been a blessing to you. If you're inspired by it, please share it with your friends and family. To learn more about this ministry and to log your prayer requests, please visit our website, riversidetabernacle.com. Our messages can be found on our YouTube uh, page, Riverside Tabernacle SA. Please don't forget the SA. Please visit, like, subscribe and share. The more you like, the more you subscribe, the wider audience we will get. Remember, we are live on Facebook every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. This is Pastor Simon and as always, it has been my pleasure. Till next time, God bless.